It has been nearly two years since we took a look at the Spaghetti Detective, an AI failure detection and remote monitoring plugin for Octoprint. Since then, a lot has changed. The Spaghetti Detective has been rebranded as Obico, the web app has been majorly overhauled, there is a mobile app available now, and the thing I am most excited about is that it now supports Clipper. Over the past couple of weeks, I've gotten a chance to play around with the new Obico and install it on this Clippered Ender 3 V2. In today's video, we will run through what Obico is for those that are not or were not familiar with the Spaghetti Detective, what the new interface looks like, and how to get it up and running on Clipper. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printer models and is constantly expanding. I've been running their upgrades on a wide range of Creality printers for over two years now and have printed everything from standard PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they're based in the US and that all their products are machined in house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality that their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop in replacements in most instances. This helps expedite the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again quickly. Links will be in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. I will have the older video I did on the Spaghetti Detective linked in the description, but I still want to cover the what. For those of you that are familiar and just want to go through the installation process, timestamps will be in the description so that you can jump around as needed. The Abico website describes it as an open source, community built 3D printing platform. Up until recently, with the expansion into Clipper, it has been a plugin available for Octoprint. With the plugin, you can monitor your printer over a webcam stream with some printer controls, run the AI failure detection to prevent massive failures, and securely tunnel into your Octoprint instance. The tunneling gives you full access to your Octoprint instance, so you get the full dashboard, all of your plugins and everything you would expect being at your local computer on the network, but you can access it from anywhere. As for the AI side of things, this works by having a webcam pointed at your printer that is constantly monitoring your active print. The stream is then run through the Obico server, and if any failures are detected based on your settings, it can do things like text or email you to let you know and even pause your print. You can turn the AI on and off as you please, but it will only run while there is an active print. Obico does have a section that allows you to upload your own print time lapse of a failure to see if it detects it, as well as documentation on how to set up your camera for the best results. I played around with a couple of webcams, one of them being incredibly cheap that had blown out highlights and it definitely had a harder time detecting the failure. There is a free version as well as a paid or pro version of Obico. The free version gives you up to five frames per second on the webcam, 10 AI detection hours per month, 100 megabits per month of Octoprint tunneling, printer controls, notifications, and failure alerts. The pro version starts at $6 per month or $4 if you pay for the year up front and gives you up to 25 frames per second of webcam streaming with no throttling. You also get 50 AI detection hours per month, unlimited Octoprint tunneling, tech support, webcam feed sharing, G-code uploading, Slack integration, and failure alerts through text in addition to the other features in the free version. If you need additional AI hours, they do have prepaid versions as well as a subscription version that will give you more hours than that default 50 in the pro version per month. Additional printers on the pro plan are $3 per month and they do have a handy little calculator that you can enter in how many machines you have and what exactly you'll need to get a better idea of what it will cost. One thing that's pretty awesome that I'm definitely interested in playing around more with is the self-hosted option. If you have an old computer or something like the Jetson Nano, you can actually host your own server locally and you will also be able to do things like run all of the AI failure detection through that server locally instead of using the Obico cloud. Since the AI is constantly improving based off of feedback, if you do decide to host your own server, you want to make sure that you update it fairly regularly so that you have the latest data available. Obico does have instructions in their documentation on how to set up your own server, but let me know in the comments down below if there is interest in this. If there is enough interest, then I will make a separate video where we can go step by step through the process of setting up the server on one of my old laptops. All right, that was a lot, but if you weren't familiar with the Spaghetti Detective, you should pretty much be up to speed now. And I did talk to the Obico team and they let me know that the 
Clipper Obico and the Octoprint Obico plugin are basically on feature parity with the exception of tunneling. Tunneling is currently only available for the Octoprint plugin, but I was told they're actively working on it for Clipper and I really hope it's something that they're able to accomplish. To install Obico for Clipper, you will of course need a 3D printer running Clipper. To bring you up to speed, I'm going to be installing it on this Ender 3 v 2 and what I've done so far is use uh, the Raspberry Pi imager to install Mainsail OS, and then I also flash the board with Clipper. Other than that, I have done nothing, and this is running just vanilla Clipper. We will start off by SSHing into our Pi. For this, you can use Terminal on Mac, Putty for Windows, or the built-in Windows SSH. In my case, Git was already installed, but we will begin by installing Git. I will have the commands on screen as well as in the description, so you can copy and paste them from there. We'll start off by entering sudo apt-get install git-y. Once that finishes, we will enter git clone and the URL for the Moonraker Obico git package. Then we will navigate to the Moonraker Obico directory by typing cd moonraker-obico. And last, we need to run dot forward slash install dot sh. When installing Git and possibly when you run the install for the Moonraker Obico, it will likely ask you for a password. By default, the password is going to be Raspberry unless you've changed it. In my case, and in most cases, it will detect your Clipper config and you will just need to hit enter to continue. If it doesn't auto detect your config, you will need to input some additional info regarding your Moonraker install. You will then be asked to enter in your server ID. By default, it's going to have the official Obico cloud server. If you are self-hosting at that point, you would enter your server's address there instead of the default address for the Obico cloud. The last step is to link your printer to your account. For this, you'll need to make an account on the website or phone app, choose link printer, select clipper, and then type these six numbers it gives you into the terminal. After that, your printer has been linked, you'll be able to see it in your Obico account, and you can close out of the terminal. Once you have completed the setup, all that's left is to hop into the web interface or into the mobile app. From there, you can manage your connected printers, enable or disable AI, choose what happens if a failure is detected, and you have some control over your printer, such as homing, starting prints using G-code that you upload to Obico, and adjusting temps. You can also see time lapses of your most recent prints, which is great if you're trying to figure out at what point things went wrong or what might have caused the failure on your print. Since the AI is constantly evolving to be more accurate, confirming whether the detection was right or wrong will help everyone using the platform. By giving feedback, you can also earn additional AI hours, which is a pretty sweet perk for just helping make the system better that you're using. If you are going to use the Obico Cloud instead of self-hosting, the free version will be enough to at least test it out and run a 10-hour print. To really take advantage of the features and the webcam streaming, you will likely want to sign up for a pro account, which is what I ended up doing. I ran a couple of tests prints on the Ender 3 v2 where I tried to force a failure such as printing ABS on this open frame printer with settings that were way too cold and Obico did catch it pretty early on. I then tried with TPU but with the lighting and the poor quality I was getting off of my webcam I had a hard time seeing what was going on and Obico was not able to detect it even after me playing around with it a bit trying to really force a failure. I then tried a slightly better camera and the TPU completely shifted away from the center where it was supposed to be printing and Obico was able to catch it also fairly early on. I will need to do much more testing, but from what I am seeing, the failure detection will primarily detect really bad failures. Something like slight warping or perhaps a small layer shift, it may not be able to detect, but things like parts getting knocked or the spaghetti blob mess that we've most of us have seen, if you haven't, you're really lucky, it seems to be doing a pretty consistent job of catching that. The key things are to make sure you have a decent webcam, adequate lighting, and of course that the printer is actually in focus. Once again, they have stuff in the documentation that really shows the best way to set the camera up so that way it has the highest possible chance of catching a failure. If you are someone that doesn't like leaving your printer running while you're away or just wants a bit of added peace of mind, then this is a really cool option to look into. Especially now that it supports Marlin 3D printers running Octoprint as well as Clipper 3D printers, it pretty much covers any 3D printer that I have here with the exception of one or two that might be running something proprietary, but it covers a very wide range of 3D printers. I haven't been running many of my 3D printers with webcams up until this point, but now that my printers are much further away for the most part on a rack, it makes a lot more sense to make it a part of my sort of regular build or modding process. And I'm seriously considering 
doing a self-hosted Obico server. Being able to check in on a 3D printer when I'm away from home or having it pause and notify me when there is an obvious failure is pretty awesome. I got a chance to talk to the Obico team at Murph a few months ago, and there really is a lot of development going on behind the scenes as they're trying to continue to make the product better and add more features. If you end up trying it out, let me know in the comments down below, especially on Clipper. Again, it's been around for Octoprint for some years now, but seeing Clipper getting all this love just makes me so happy, especially when it seems like that is the direction a lot of the at least desktop hobby level 3D printers are going. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do wanna support the channel furthermore, there'll be links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Deanna from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.